I may be a bit behind on the party for this one, but I finally took the time to binge watch Season 1 of Kaguya-sama Love is War this week. Seeing as Season 2 is no doubt one of the most hyped up shows of Spring 2020, I decided to check out what this was all about, and I was not disappointed. For the most part. To begin with, this is a very formulated type of comedy, which means that it revolves around the same gimmick all the time. In this case, it's where our two leads try to make each other confess their feelings through some overcomplicated tsundere mind games. The crowning jewel of Kaguya-sama is easily how much they can push this same formula differently every single time. The sheer amount of creativity in writing these situations is just absolutely genius. And the one carrying all of this is definitely Definitely, the narrator. Now at first you might wonder, how much can a narrator actually impact a story? In other cases, having a narrator might not make too much of a difference, but in Kaguya-sama's case, it actually has quite a big impact to the overall presentation. Think about it this way. This is a show about two competitive geniuses trying their best to out-genius each other every day. And just as we, the viewers, are spectators to their mind games, the narrator, in turn, provides the commentary. Often taking us into the minds of these characters so we can understand their ways of thinking, spicing things up with the absolutely brilliant voice acting, and just letting us enjoy the show even more. Everything is very well thought out, and once again formulated. But despite that, it's never boring, since they've pushed what they can do within this formula to an almost infinite extent. However, this gimmick-centered approach also gave rise to Kaguya-sama's biggest flaw. Near the end of the season, the show suddenly starts to put focus on Kaguya's background, her family background to be exact. This really felt like it came out of left field for me because, well, to put it bluntly, I didn't really care about the character enough, and I didn't feel worried about her relationship with an apparently uncaring father either. The reason for this is that, through the first 80% of the season, there was no space for emotional investment with any of the characters, because we were all watching them as spectators. Sure, Ishigami's bleak outlook in life is very relatable, but I couldn't find myself feeling like I was really inside of their world, like I was really a part of their story. To make a comparison, Working, another rom-com, chooses to include the viewers into their world the first thing in episode 1, with a first-person point of view of you being welcomed by one of the main characters into the family restaurant where the story takes place. Kakuya-sama never did anything to make the viewers feel like they're really a part of the story, only ever observing it. So, for it to suddenly bring out an attempt at a tragic backstory, and expect the viewers to care, feels almost shoehorned in when compared to other shows that do this much better. This is easily the biggest flaw in this adaptation, and while I haven't started following the original manga yet, purely judging an anime form, I found myself really losing interest during this final part. It's such a shame too, because the show had a really strong start, it's really unfortunate that it couldn't keep the momentum all the way to the finish line. But this by no means makes Kaguya-sama a bad show. It's just a flaw in an otherwise very solid rom-com. And even then, the comedic style in this part is still consistent with the rest of the show, so there isn't a feeling of a complete disconnect. This finale arc still feels like an integral part of the overall story, but it just could have been done earlier and perhaps better. Overall, Kaguya-sama Love is War is an entertaining and creative rom-com, with hilarious characters, original ideas, and a very fun concept. I thoroughly enjoyed the show despite my disappointments with the season finale, and I'm excited to follow up with the currently airing season 2. If you like rom-coms or just slice of life in general, and you haven't seen this show yet, I'd recommend you to put it on your to-watch list, seeing as it does bring something new to the table, and it will keep you entertained enough to want more. My final score is 8 out of 10.